Throughout New England, rivers big and small have driven the course of history, moving people and products, facilitating commerce and migration. The Connecticut, the Kennebec, the Penobscot, and the Merrimack are all well known as mighty waterways that shaped our region as they flowed through Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, and Connecticut. Only Rhode Island seems left out of the picture. Or was it? As I recently learned, the Blackstone River, which flows for some 45 miles from Worcester, Massachusetts to Providence, where it becomes the tidal Seekonk River, played a key role in launching the industrial era in America. And I suppose that makes it famous, or infamous, depending on your point of view. In 1793, English-born Samuel Slater helped establish the first water-powered textile mill in the country on the banks of the Blackstone, using mechanical engineering skills he had acquired in his home country. Other mills soon followed, popping up along the Blackstone and other rivers as the technology spread through New England. The Blackstone of the 1800s looked very different than the river of today as I saw firsthand on a canoe trip with Mike LaFond of the Blackstone Valley Tourism Council. After meeting at the new Central Falls Landing Launch Area, Mike and I set off upstream through a riverscape that seemed miles, if not centuries, removed from the surrounding urban sprawl of Central Falls, Lincoln, and Cumberland. The Blackstone River is approximately 45 miles between the city of Worcester and the city of Providence. It dumps right off into the uh, Narragansett Bay through the Seekonk River. Okay, so it, it basically becomes the Seekonk River. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. And is that when it becomes, is that where it starts to be tidal? Yes, it is. And so this stretch that we're on right here between the two dams, how, how long is that? That's approximately three miles between the uh, hydro d dam uh, right there at Broad Street in Cumberland to the uh, Route 122 Menden Road. Uh, bridge up in um, uh, Cumberland Lincoln Line. The Blackstone's industrial past led to yet another notable chapter in American transportation history. Beginning in 1825, a canal was dug alongside much of the Blackstone to allow the transport of goods between Worcester and Providence. A series of 49 locks were created to deal with the changing elevation, the canal boats pulled by oxen and horses. The trip from Worcester to Providence took two days. Right, and so that barge, like that whole canal barge system, how long was that in place for? That was in place for approximately 20 years. Uh, then once the uh, railroad was invented, uh, that was pretty much uh, taken, the, taken over because the river, uh, some years it rides uh, extremely high and then there's other years where it uh, rides extremely low. So it was kind of undependable. That's you know? right. <laughs> you didn't know if you could get the goods up or downstream, depending on the water levels, right? De definitely, and with railroad, it was more dependable. Now, there's also a, a river boat that operates, like an English, like a you know European style, like canal I boat or something that operates on this river too? Yes, it does. There's actually two of them. One that you can uh, rent to, uh, to stay in, uh, which is the Samuel Slater, and the second one is the Explorer. They have right now down in East Providence. Okay, uh, and, and, they, do they, and does that do those canal boats operate on this stretch of yes, the river? Yes, it does. Okay, and you can stay overnight on them? On the, on the uh, Samuel Slater. Nice. It's a nice little B&B, &B, and it's all operated by the Tourism Council. Today, wildlife abounds along the heavily wooded banks of the river, as well as in the river itself. On my trip with Mike, we encountered great blue heron, egrets, a kingfisher, a red-tailed hawk, and even a yellow-crowned night heron. Mike has also seen a bald eagle along this stretch of river. Additionally, several species of fish can be found in the Blackstone, including largemouth bass, pickerel, carp, sunfish, and even trout. It's a natural wonderland for paddlers of all types and abilities, and the Blackstone River Tourism Council is helping to make more people aware of the river's value as a recreational resource. Blackstone Valley Tourism Council started in 1985. It was started by our president, Bob Billington. He's still with us today, still the leader of our organization. And he, at the beginning, was kind of just a one-man show. Like, he was a one-man force, and he, saw the resources that Blackstone Valley had, the history that Blackstone Valley had, the outdoor recreation that it had, but he noticed that there wasn't 
a planned promotion for this area. So he started with that and it's grown over this time to, to what we are today, to an organization that is internationally award-winning for our sustainable tourism developments. And we've grown into all of these different facets of our organization. Our mission is to inspire sustainable tourism in the area. So we work in, in a lot of different areas with our local governments on, on certain projects, sustainable tourism development, environmental education, we work on cultural and historic preservation. So we have our, our hand in a lot of different things and, and all of that comes together to really showcase the wonderful place that Blackstone Valley is. A lot of the efforts to get kids out on the river I'd say probably started in 1993. That was when we launched our educational vehicle, uh, the Explorer is what we call it. It's a boat, it's a 40 passenger boat that we have here. It's usually right along the Blackstone, but we actually, uh, the Blackstone River, but we actually move it around Blackstone Valley quite a bit. And that is our, like our, our key piece of equipment for environmental education. So we bring school aged children down here. We cater our, our programs to the, the age uh, and the class that's there, but we do water quality testing. We teach about turbidity. We teach about all these other different things. And we've been doing that for 28 years. And just recently we launched our kayak education program. So specifically here in Central Falls, where we are right now, Central Falls Landing, we have the, the youth of this city come down so that they can access this river by boats. We're teaching them kayak safety, uh, rowing techniques and, and just getting them out to ha like, have better access to this amazing resource that's in their backyard.